How's it going, guys? So a very easy, a very bread and butter hematology question for U.S. Simile, step one and two. If you miss this question, you will not pass the exam. Allow me to fear monger. Allow me, to, allow me to come right out of the gates and just be a flagrant asshole, okay? But you need to know this question. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. And find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Links are down below. Now, looking at this question here, uh, four-day-old boy, 10 days, 10, yeah, 10 days. So four-day-old boy, 10 hours following circumcision. He's had bleeding at the circumcision site, and this was following uncomplicated uh, pregnancy and delivery. He has a left temporal cephalohematoma. This is just a, a bleed over the brain, okay? And he has a normal platelet count at 300,000 per microliter. Normal range is 150 to 450,000 per microliter. Ble bleeding time is normal uh, at five minutes. Uh, the normal range is two to seven minutes. Prothrombin time, normal, 14 seconds. Normal range is 10 to 15 seconds. Partial thromboplastin time is elevated at 52 seconds. Normal range is 25 to 40 seconds. Now, I recognize that on the exam, you'll have your lab values available to you. You need to take your fucking training wheels off, okay? Especially if you're studying for 2CK, you need to know these basic lab values. It saves you time. It's about time, all right? So questions asking, uh, most likely explanation for these findings. So let's just walk through the answers here. Choice A, Bernard Solier or Bernard Solier syndrome, wrong fucking answer, okay? This is a platelet disorder. Uh, this is a problem with platelet adhesion, uh, congenital deficiency of glycoprotein 1B on platelets. Uh, we do not have an elevated bleeding time, okay? So bleeding time reflects platelet function, okay? Bleeding time is platelets. Our bleeding time is normal. So you know instantaneously, Bernard Solier, wrong fucking answer. Glansman thrombosthenia, this is congenital deficiency of glycoproteins 2B, 3A. This is platelet aggregation. Once again, uh, without even being fancy, we simply have a normal bleeding time. It's not elevated, so we don't have a platelet issue, okay? So two fancy uh, syndromes right here that when students don't know, they'll choose them, okay? So uh, that's why I put them in there, okay? If you didn't know the answer, you're like, hmm, to be gl you know, Glansman thrombosthenia? It's wrong fucking answer, all right? So choice C, hemophilia. This is our correct answer. So we have an isolated increase in PTT. This is how hemophilia is going to present in terms of lab values. As I said, bread and butter, it's past level. It's not, it's not crazy, it's not complicated. Now, an extra factoid for you provides some value is that the two ways hemophilia classically presents in USMLE is going to be either a school-aged boy, because it's excellent recessive, it's going to be a school-aged boy who has a hemarthrosis, they love hemarthrosis, or it can be a neonate, especially for pediatrics or TCK, uh, excessive bleeding following circumcision, okay? So uh, hemophilia A, obviously deficiency of factor eight or antibodies against factor eight. Hemophilia B, deficiency of factor nine or antibodies against factor nine. If they tell you that uh, uh, factors are administered, the deficient factor is administered and it doesn't work, uh, the answer is gonna be antibodies against those factors rather than deficiency. Uh, choice D, vitamin K deficiency, wrong fucking answer. Uh, this would cause both an increased PT and PTT. So whilst Vitamin K deficiency, obviously common in neonates. They'll, they will mention bleeding from the umbilical stump, okay? Um, that's the classic way vitamin K deficiency presents in neonates, bleeding from the umbilical stump or a kid born at home with that presentation. But you'd have an elevated PT and PTT, okay? Vitamin K, a cofactor for gamma glutamyl carboxylase, activates clotting factors 2, 7, 9, 10, protein CNS. So prothrombin time, I mean, that's uh, the factor 7, right? Uh, uh, in that pathway, let alone uh, 2 and 10 are in the common pathway. So PT is elevated in addition to PTT, all right? Um, von Willebrand disease, wrong fucking answer. So this is autosomal dominant. This will classically be a teenager or older. Uh, they usually give it to you as a girl. It obviously, it can be a dude, but they uh, reward you with inheritance patterns. Uh, so it's autosomal dominant, and meaning, for example, that if you get a 17-year-old girl with a bleeding disorder, you can be rewarded, quote unquote, because you can eliminate hemophilia because that's X-linked recessive. Okay, that's how the genetics is integrated. So my point is, uh, von Willebrand disease is going to present in a teenager generally as a mix of a clotting factor problem and a platelet pl problem. So platelet problem, mild cutaneous findings such as ecchymoses, uh, petit as well as epistaxis, nosebleeds, those are platelet problems, clotting factor problems, excessive bleeding after tooth extraction, heavy periods, okay, or even hemarthrosis, but hemarthrosis tends to be more hemophilia. So von Willebrand is a 17-year-old girl who has history of nosebleeds and heavy periods, or a uh, history of nosebleeds, and she has excessive bleeding after tooth extraction. That's von Willebrand disease. Wrong fucking answer, as I just said. So 
that's it for this clip, okay? Bread and butter. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content if you like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.